In this video, I'm going to show you a new way of completing the square. So this is not something that I created. This is something I found in a book from the 1800s. And we'll talk a little bit about the book later in this video. But for now, let's just jump into the process and let me explain the math behind this method. And we'll do a couple examples and then I'll show you what the book is and we'll talk more about it. So the first step is to take your quadratic equation and get rid of the constant term. So just add it to the other side. So plus seven plus seven. So we have four x squared plus three x and that's equal to seven. The next step is to take this number here, the coefficient of x squared and multiply it by four. So I'll do it on the side, four times four is 16. Okay, so now you take this number and you multiply your entire equation by 16. So I'll go ahead and put the 16 here. Then we have four x squared plus three x equal to 16 times seven. Okay, now we'll go ahead and distribute through. 16 times four is 64 x squared. 16 times three x is 48 x. And 16 times seven is 112. Okay, so again, step one, you take this number here and you multiply it by four. And then you basically multiply your entire equation by that number, so both sides. The next step is to take this number here and square it and add it to both sides. So three squared is equal to nine. So now basically you just add nine to both sides. So we have 64 X squared plus 48 X plus nine, and that's equal to 112 plus nine, which is going to be equal to 121. Boom, now this is a perfect square trinomial. This means all you do now is basically Look at this here and take the square root of that. That's going to be 8x. Keep the sign. Take the square root of that, you get 3. And then you put a 2 here. So all of this magically becomes this. Just like when regular completing the square. You keep the sign. And then this is going to be a 3. And then this piece here is going to be the square root of that. So square root of that, square root of that. Keep the sign. That's equal to 121. And now it's easy. You take the square root of both sides. You have 8x plus 3 equal to plus or minus 11 because the square root of 121 is 11 and whenever you take the square root of like a variable squared you want to put a plus or minus there. It's minus 3 minus 3. So you get 8x equals minus 3 plus or minus 11. Divide by 8. Going pretty quick but I'm going to do another example. I'm going to do some harder examples. The examples in this video will get harder and harder and harder. So then we have negative three plus or minus 11 over eight. So now you have two cases. Let's do the minus case first. So minus, minus 11 over eight. So minus three minus 11 is minus 14 over eight. Uh, divide by two, I guess you get seven fourths. Boom, that's one of the answers. And then the other one will be the plus case. So negative three plus 11 over eight. So this is gonna be eight over eight which is one. So those are the answers to this quadratic equation using this new method of completing the square. Again, this is a method I've never seen in any, any modern book. I collect math books and I've never seen this in a book before, uh, but I found this in a really old book from the 1800s. Let's go ahead and do another example right away. But first, let me just recap. Step one, you take this, multiply it by four, okay? And then you multiply the whole equation by that number. Step two, take this number, square it, Add it to both sides, this thing will be a perfect square trinomial, which means it factors, which means you can take the square root and proceed like you normally do when completing the square. Okay, let's go ahead and do another example right now. Okay, now it's no joke. We've got 2ax squared minus bx equals 2a plus b. The best part is I haven't even tried to do this, so I'm gonna do it on the spot and see if it works. Step one, take whatever is here, multiply it by four. So you have four times 2a, which is equal to 8a, boom. Now you take the 8a and you multiply it through across everything. So we have 8a, parentheses, 2a x squared, minus bx. I'm gonna go a little bit slower this time because I haven't done this. And plus, like, there's variables everywhere, so <laughs> hopefully it works out okay. The good thing is I have all the answers too. This is from an old book from the 1800s that actually has all the answers. And I'll show you that book in a minute. It's really, really cool, and it's actually free. You can Google it and you can get the book. So then this times this is gonna be 16 
a squared x squared. And then this times this is going to be minus 8a bx. Right? Yep, looks okay. This times this will be 16a squared. Right? a times a is a squared. And then 8a times b is 8ab. Really nice. Okay, so we're here. Wow, looks really messy. Let me just check that. So we multiplied it by four. That's the first step. And then this new method says that you multiply this by your entire equation. So we got 16a squared x squared minus 8abx. Yep. And then we've got 16a squared 8ab. Yep. Next step is you take this number and square it. So this is a negative b. So we're going to square that. That's going to give us b squared. And now we add that to both sides. So plus b squared, plus b squared. So we have 16 a squared x squared minus 8 abx plus b squared equals 16 a squared plus 8ab plus b squared. Very nice. And this should be a perfect square trinomial. That means we basically can do this. This will be 4ax, right? You just take the square root, take the square root, take the square root, and then minus b, right? Take the square root, squared. And that should be correct. B Square this, you get this. Square this, you get this. Multiply these and double them, and you should get this. Let's see. Negative 4abx times 2 is negative 8abx. Perfect. This is also a perfect square trinomial. It's going to be 4a plus b squared. Let's check that. b squared is b squared. 4a quantity squared is that. Multiply these and double them. Boom, there we go. Take the square root, take the square root. I'm feeling much better about this problem now because it's working out. <laughs> so this is 4ax minus b. But let's not get sloppy. Plus or minus. And then this is 4a plus b. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in parentheses because I'm pretty sure we need to do that. Okay, now we're going to add the b over. So 4ax equals b plus or minus. And then we have 4a plus b. And then let's divide by 4a. Obviously, in all this, a is not 0. So this is x equals b plus or minus parentheses 4a plus b all over 4a. And we've reached the crucial point in the problem, and I am going to sharpen my pencil. I know it's weird, but it's starting to get dull. Might as well do it. I can't wait to show you the book. We're almost done, then I'll show you the book, and so you can see how cool it is. Okay, so let's take cases. Let's take the plus case first. So the plus case is x equals b plus 4a plus b. So 4a plus b over 4a. Yeah, that looks right, right? b plus 4a plus b. So that's just going to be x equals 2b plus 4a over 4a. I guess we can pull out a b here, a 2 here. So we could do x equals 2b plus 2a over 4a, like that. Yeah, that looks uh, looks okay. All right, pulling out a 2. 2 times b is 2b. 2 times 2a is 4a. Yeah, it's kind of weird, right? And then this is just going to be a 2. So x equals b plus 2a. This is one of the exercises in the book. I just thought, let me just make this video and pick one for you. So here we go. I wanted to pick one of the ones that looked harder. So this looked a lot harder. Yeah, that looks okay. All right. So then this one will be the minus case. b minus parentheses. You see how the parentheses is really important here over 4a. Oh, much cleaner. So this is going to be um, b minus 4a minus b over 4a. So this will be, these will cancel, so you'll get negative 4a over 4a. Um, so that's just going to be negative 1. Wow, what a weird answer. So what we should do now is we should check our answers right now. Awesome, there is the answer right there. You see it? 2a plus b over 2a or negative 1. So the answer is correct. Feels really, really good to do it right. Just a quick recap and then we'll talk about the book. So you see, first step, multiply by 4, so you get 8a. And then you multiply your entire equation by that on both sides. And then you take this and you square it and you add it to both sides. And then you get a perfect square trinomial. Pretty cool. All right, let me show you the book. Here is the rule as it is explained in the book. Multiply the equation by four times the coefficient of the highest power of the unknown quantity. 
add to that the square of the coefficient of the first power of the unknown quantity, and then find the value of the unknown quantity by extracting the square root, etc. So why is this method better in any way than the old method? Well, I think this explains it here. It says the coefficient of the second power may always be made a square, all fractions avoided, the square completed, and the values of the unknown quantity found as follows. So basically, you can avoid fractions by using this method, and I think that is the appeal. So this is the book, and my copy is falling apart, and the good news is this book is free. You can go online and you can search for it on Google, and it's a free book because it's so old, I'm pretty sure it's just now free. It's in the public domain. I will try to leave a link in the description in case you want to buy a copy if I can find it. It's called Elements of Algebra and it's by Milne and my copy is falling apart. When I bought it, it wasn't like this. It's because I've been working through some of the exercises that it looks so old. Here's the inside of the book, Elements of Algebra, a course for grammar schools and beginners in public and private schools. So this is a book that was used by kids, right? Kids in school would use this to learn algebra. So it's intended for kids who are in school. And it is from 1894. Talk about an old book. I've got to give it a whiff. Oh, it smells so good. And my copy is literally falling apart. In fact, since I've owned it, I've been reading it and working through some of the problems. And the more I use it, the more in pieces it becomes. Fortunately, this book is still available for free. All you have to do is go on Google and type in the name of the book and you should be able to read the book for free. The book has answers to every single problem. I'm pretty sure every single problem has an answer and it's in the back of the book. Pretty cool that there's a book from the 1800s that actually has all of the answers in it, which makes it really good for self-study for trying to learn some algebra. It's got a lot of really basic math. Let me show you the contents. So here are the contents of this book. You can see it's really basic. It starts with algebraic processes, algebraic expressions, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, really basic stuff, right? Nothing too complicated. And then here's the second page of the contents, just more basic math. I think the explanations in this book are pretty good. It definitely reads very differently from all the modern textbooks that I have, and that makes it kind of fun. But for me, the really exciting part about a book like this is all of the wonderful exercises. This is the section on algebraic processes, which is the first one, and you can see it's got tons of problems in here, which is really, really cool. I mean, 49, that's a lot of word problems, right? Most people hate word problems, but these are kind of fun. Yeah, look at that, 81. Hopefully you've learned something after watching this video. I thought that this was a really cool way of completing the square, and so I thought I should share it. I hope this video has been helpful to you. Good luck and take care.